the present video is uh, basically on the boundary conditions for the electric and magnetic fields and uh, how these uh, boundary conditions uh, help us uh, in solution to the uh, electrostatic problems or uh, electromagnetic problems and uh, the solution to these problems uh, uh, can be observed in the case of uh, waveguides and uh, in uh, the case of uh, plane wave propagation where we have applied these uh, boundary conditions uh, uh, in actual cases. Now, uh, we'll uh, divide this video into three parts. One part uh, consists of the uh, complete uh, electric and magnetic uh, field boundary conditions. The second part of uh, this video will uh, consist of a two gate problems, one for 2003 and another for 2006. They are uh, based on the boundary conditions for electric field and the third part would consist of a problem of 2011 which is based on the boundary conditions for the magnetic field. So uh, these boundary conditions, uh, uh, how they are introduced and how these boundary conditions are used to solve the uh, practical problems. So we start with the uh, uh, boundary conditions for the electric field and uh, here we consider a dielectric media that means the two media are dielectric media and uh, first we consider the tangential uh, field of uh, electric at the boundary. So in this case we have two media, medium 1 and medium 2 having medium 1 has a dielectric constant of epsilon 1, medium 2 having epsilon 2. Here we consider uh, a rectangle uh, halfway across uh, both the uh, media and uh, uh, we write the tangential electric field as ET1 in medium 1 and ET2 in medium 2. Now we take uh, the line integral around this path. Uh, since this electric field, the the uh, voltage around a closed path would be zero in, in an uh, electric field. So basically it means that E dot DL would be zero. So that uh, we apply this to this uh, rectangle that means for AB E dot DL for this length then BC uh, then DC then CD and for DNA. So this is the complete loop. Now this should be zero. Now uh, for the case of uh, actual uh, boundary this delta, delta Y would uh, tend to zero. So in this uh, case the term containing delta Y like uh, AB and uh, CD path lengths, AB and CD path lengths they would have a zero value. So we would have uh, uh, only the tangential part, so it will be ET1 delta X is the length of this. So ET1 delta X minus ET2 delta X is zero and uh, mm, so we get that ET1 equals ET2. That means tangential component of the electric field is continuous at the dielectric dielectric interface. Okay, now if one dielectric is, uh, one uh, medium is a dielectric and the other medium is a conductor, so we know the electric field in a conductor is zero. If the electric field in a conductor is zero, so the medium one is epsilon one, this medium two is a conductor, so electric field in the conductor is zero, that means ET2 is zero in the conductor, tangential component is zero in the conductor, if uh, ET2 is zero in the conductor, 
then ET1 should be equal to ET2, so that means ET1 will also be 0. That means the electric field at the surface of the conductor would also be 0. So this has been the boundary condition for the uh, case of uh, electric field. Now we'll see the boundary condition for the case of uh, magnetic field. Uh, in this case, we again consider a dialectic media. Uh, media 1 is epsilon 1, media 2 is having dialectic constant epsilon 2, and uh, we consider uh, or we hypothetically make uh, a cylindrical surface halfway across the boundary, and uh, this surface we can apply to this surface the Gauss's law, that means d dot ds equals to charge enclosed. So d dot ds we see at the top, and then d dot ds at the bottom, and then for the side surface. Since uh, uh, we restrict our uh, observation to the boundary, the delta h would tend to zero, so this term corresponding to sides would be zero, so since delta s, so we are left with the term dn1 delta s and so. So dn1 minus dn2 equals to rho s, and rho s is the surface charge density. That means if there is a surface charge density on the dielectric, so this uh, electric displacement uh, densities, uh, uh, they are not uh, continuous, but they are discontinuous by area surface charge density. If there is no surface charge density on the surface of the dielectric boundary, then dn1 and dn2, they are continuous, then dn1 is equal to dn2. Now, we'll consider uh, the case of a, a conductor, a dial, conductor dielectric boundary, that means uh, one media is uh, uh, directly the other media is conductor. In the conductor that uh, D displacement density would be zero in a conductor. So if uh, the D is zero, that we are left with the Tn equals to rho s. That means the normal count component uh, of the displacement density in the dielectric would be equal to surface charge on the dielectric. Now, uh, we now come to the uh, magnetic uh, uh, boundary conditions for the magnetic field, and these uh, boundary conditions have been uh, uh, quite uh, useful, and I would say more powerful, and uh, that we'll th see through the problems when we discuss. Here, uh, here we first consider the normal component for the boundary relation of a magnetic field. We have seen here, we have considered a cylindrical surface, and that cylindrical surface is half across, uh, across the boundary. This is a medium 1, this is a medium 2, having permeabilities mu 1 and mu 2. So, uh, we apply the Gauss's law here, B dot ds is equal to 0, Bn1, In1, delta s equals Bn minus Bn2, In2, delta s. This is the flux. That means this a flux going in and the coming out, they are zero, so Bn1 should be equal to zero. So net flux is zero. So that is why this Bn1 equals zero. So what we say, the normal component of B is continuous across the boundary. Now let us see the tangential component of H, the magnetic field. Now again we meet a rectangle, rectangle uh, that's a halfway uh, between the boundary, and uh, try to see the fields the HD1 and HD2 are the fields here. Now uh, we can uh, apply the Ampere's law here that uh, HD1 delta X minus HD2 delta X would be equal to I, the current enclosed since delta y would be tending to zero, so this comes out to be HT1 minus HT2 equals to, uh, so basically the current and current uh, point area, that's uh, current density, this amperes per meter. So basically this is uh, the initial component of magnetic field is 
not continuous, it is A equals to current density. If there is no current density, then H T one equals to H T two. H T one equals H T two if J S is zero. Uh, this uh, relation is quite useful that uh, that n cross H one minus H two is equal to J S. Uh, when we consider uh, the uh, other media here as a conductor, there would be a current sheet and that current sheet uh, would have a current and in that case we, we can find the current of a current sheet as amperes per meter width of the sheet and in that case that uh, n cross s1 minus 2 equals to js. That means where n here is the outward normal to the conductor surface. So it is actually outgoing normal to the surface and by finding the values for H1 or H2 we can find the value for Js and please note that the direction of Js, uh, the sheet current flow and the H1, the direction of the field, they are although at right angles but they are at the plane of the boundary. These uh, components lie in the plane of the boundary. So you can determine uh, this does not give the direction but you can determine the direction uh, of the um, field components, fields and the corresponding uh, current density uh, by using this relation. So this is a very important uh, uh, boundary condition. Uh, this is uh, and uh, is H1 minus H2 Js. So uh, we can always uh, determine uh, the value for uh, uh, the field and uh, you would notice that when we will uh, consider uh, the problem of 2011 gate, uh, it will make it further clear that how this part of the boundary condition is being used in that particular problem. Thank you.